what are the concerns of the developing countries when it comes to wto so till now you might have got a brief picture about the challenges that will be faced by the developed countries at the wto however we will see briefly what are all the challenges or concerns of the wto first thing is unequal benefits from trade liberalization so it is clear in front of our eyes Uh, good morning students welcome back to pluto says and uh, today is our 56th day uh, i am sorry there was a break uh, in our 95 days prelim challenge i got an uh, another uh, uh, assignment because of that we could not uh, do the lectures in the 95 days uh, prelim challenge however so i believe from now on there will be no disturbance so daily we will be doing one class okay all right so however we are on course to complete the 95 days challenge still may we may further cover up to 100 days also right so we were in the economics uh, we were discussing the economic subject economics we were discussing in that we have completed uh, most of the topics only one topic uh, was left that is india and wto and india wto and india or you can also say it as india and wto india and wto so this is also one of the important topic so you know very well uh, wto when it comes to wto uh, there are lot of concerns associated with the uh, within the wto so the ministerial conferences uh, many issues are pending at the ministerial conferences so also you also know about the rounds so some of the important rounds are there so however the doha round that has been started in 2001 so it has stuck since 2018 so the negotiations are not going forward so there is uh, basically gap between the understanding of the developing countries and also the developed countries so many of the issues that are very very important for the developing countries those issues are there in the doha round however the developing uh, developed countries they have chose to ignore those uh, we can say initiatives for the developing countries so however the developing countries want that the doha round of talks have to be completed and whatever the due measures are there for their benefit they have to be completed so then only the developing countries argue that then only further new things can be taken up for the discussion however the developed developed countries have chosen to ignore the aspects related to developing countries and they are further the developing countries bringing several new issues like investment right investment uh, subsidies subsidies for fisheries etc and women's rights etc so they are bringing uh, concerns as issues that are more concerned with them the developed countries so here we can say there is lot of things going on in wto and the consensus basically the formula uh, i mean the uh, mechanism is that countries should work with consensus consensus at the wto but however uh, the consensus there is no consensus on several issues many issues there is no consensus consensus in wto right so uh, also recently we have complete completed 13th ministerial meeting so for every 2 uh, years the there will be a ministerial meeting uh, in the wto so recently that is concluded uh, 13th ministerial meeting has been concluded and also there has been agreement on several issues but also concerns still remain so many other issues still pending uh, some of the issues uh, have been that have been brought by the developing uh, developing countries uh, that are not acceptable to 
developed countries that are not those are not acceptable to developing countries and uh, further the developing countries raised issues such as uh, investments one thing the go- developed countries want that more securities security for the investments that are flowing from the developed world to the developing world and also there have been some protections given for e-commerce during the early 2000s because at that stage the e-commerce was at a nascent stage so to promote the uh, we can say growth of the e-commerce certain concessions have been given at that time for the e-commerce companies such as tax breaks and not uh, much tax has to be imposed on the uh, e-commerce companies however still the developed uh, developing uh, developed countries want that those concessions have to be continued for the e-commerce companies uh, so it is not at all acceptable to developing countries because you know very well that now by now the e-commerce companies have grown by leaps and bounds so if you see the companies like amazon they have literally entered every country and they are dominating the e-commerce business so now the developing countries was the uh, want that uh, they have to be taxed and also proper competition i mean platform shall also be given for their national e-commerce companies or domestic e-commerce companies however the developed countries they want that uh whatever the tax breaks are there or preferable treatment is given to the e-commerce companies they it should be continued so in this way there are lot of disagreements between the developed and the developing countries so we will see uh we will see what are what are the issues associated with the develop uh, i mean uh broadly for the developing countries uh vis-a-vis the wto and in the end we will see the specific concerns uh, that are there for india with respect to with respect to wto so before that we will some we will see some brief introduction of the wto so earlier the earlier form of the wto is gat general agreement on tariff and trade so when the world bank has formed wt ibrd that is known as world bank also ibrd and imf were formed uh, during that time only so after the world war is over so there the country all the countries have realized that so there should be some multilateral agencies to control and bring all the countries to a consensus so at that time only ibrd imf and also wto was kind of body was also uh, planned but because of the uh, we can say withdrawal of the usa from the trade body so world trade organization body cannot be we can say initiated at that time uh, on the lines of ibrd that is world bank and imf so an alternative uh, way way that is gat general agreement on, on tariff and trade was initiated at that time however so after the i mean 3 to 4 uh, decades have been passed and at that time during 1995 at that period globalization was also taking place on a fast pace so the requirement the need for wto has been realized and the wto came to existence in 1995 so it is the another more i mean gat itself has been modified into wto All right so this is about brief introduction about the wto now almost all the countries i mean leaving few countries uh, some 10 to 15 countries almost all countries are the members of the wto so countries like china which have followed increased protectionism they have been uh, china has also become the member of the wto and it is one of the mo- one of the countries which is most benefited by wto is china so before joining the wt uh, wto it has strengthened and complete i mean uh, we can say achieved maturity in its production process especially in the uh, industrial and manufacturing sector it has achieved uh, we can say maturity so 
so after that once it entered the uh, wto so all the countries had to open doors for china because of the rules that are there in the wto so rules like most favored nation equal treatment national treatment so because of all these reasons countries had to open doors for china including india so china increasingly exported to all the rest of the world and immensely benefited with that so we, if we see the experience experience of india we can say uh, largely it is a mixed experience in certain aspects uh, we have benefited if we see like it industry due to globalization we have benefited in it industry and also some sectors like automobiles etc and uh, sectors like <coughs> uh, uh, gems and jewelry petroleum product so further they have seen increase when it comes to india however in sectors like agriculture and uh, uh, dairy sector so in all these sectors we have uh, we had to face negative consequences because of uh, cheaper imports from the developing countries like australia united states of america and other european countries so kind of they have flooded the indian markets so the farmers had to face several problems so this thing is there and also uh, like differential treatment one more thing is also there so countries can choose to treat uh, countries differently when it comes to certain things i mean under some underdeveloped countries so for example best examples are bangladesh bangladesh vietnam so these kind of these countries are treated differently by the uh, big countries like developed countries like usa european union etc so because of this reason i mean whatever the exports are coming from these countries they will be treated preferably i mean low taxes will be imposed on them so because of this reason india has to face a lot of uh, challenges in textile sector so because uh, because uh, preferential treatment uh, has been given to these countries so textile imports from these countries have become cheaper when we compare to the exports that have been done by the uh, india so because of this reason uh we had to face lot of challenges uh, in our textiles exports apart from that india itself has to open imports uh, exports from the other countries for the same product india once upon a time known for that is textiles so countries like sri lanka bangladesh now exporting their textiles to india because under the wto rules india has to low india had to lower its taxes on many of the goods so on many of the goods india had to reduce the taxes so india had to reduce the, reduce the taxes so because of this reason india had to import the textile in fact india which which is a surplus surplus country when it, when it comes to cotton textiles so it itself has to open doors for textile imports so all these things have taken place uh once the wto has come into existence so these kind of issues are there so because of this thing we call india's experience with the wt wto is a mixed experience so concerns are many uh, for india when it comes to uh, wto rules and policies such as subsidies exports investment e-commerce so tariff and non tariff barrier barriers so all these issues are there we will see the issues one by one right so benefits few benefits uh, india has been a founding member of the wto and uh, when the gatt was also formed that time also india was a member right so benefits india has briefly benefited because of because all the countries had to open their borders for the uh, for the exports from the other countries so similarly india has also briefly benefited because the because of the redu reduced tariffs by other countries so uh, some exports have improved from the india right and also globalization has happened india's integration with other economies has completed successfully also there is a dispute settlement mechanism so whenever there is a dispute between two countries about trade related issues 
let's say china is preventing export of rice from india so india has uh, sorry china has put some barriers so india has the right to take this issue to the wto so there the two parties will be listened and a judgment will be given by the wto after that an appellate mechanism is also there so after that uh, declares i mean once appellate judgment is also comes so the parties have to agree and follow to that judgment whatever the judgment is given by the uh, dispute resolution mechanism so in this way india has benefited here and there right so however challenges persist for india uh, all the challenges that i have mentioned including the challenges uh, about the doha round also so in the doha round there were many issues that were beneficial to the developing countries so the developing countries developed countries choose to ignore them in between in between and uh, there is a kind of stall uh, stalled those doha round of negotiations have been stalled now they have stalled since 2008 so these kind of challenges are also there right so wto rounds so <coughs> these are the some of the some of the important rounds since the gat has been established geneva round 1947 kennedy round 1964 1967 tokyo round 1973 79 uruguay round it is one of the most important rounds so apart from that they have been lot of progress in the uruguay round and apart from that the wto itself has emerged because of the discussions of the this particular round uruguay round so it was the eighth round eighth round overall uh, in the wto negotiations i mean gat negotiations so from this round also uh, also the wto has emerged right once the wto was formed in 1995 one of the important and the most important round is doha round it has been started in 2011 and the negotiations have continued till 2008 and uh, since then the round talks on the round have stalled and there is no further momentum or progress in that round right so this is about the rounds apart from that there will be ministerial conference for every 2 years so there important issues will be brought to discussion and the countries the i mean if a certain we can say policy or measure has to be implemented or a change has to be brought in they they should work in a consensus basis consensus basis i mean all the countries have to agree to that proposal there is no kind of majority so many of the occasions where uh, in general conditions we see if the majority members are agreeing that will be passed but however that is not the case with the wto so all the countries have to agree then only a particular measure will be taken or change will be initiated so if a country choose not to cooperate uh, there are exceptions examples like usa and the european union they choose to abstain in many cases so because of that reason many decisions that could be beneficial to the developing countries they have been stalled so this is the case however WTO 13th ministerial meeting conference has held in Abu Dhabi it held in the february and march of 2024 so some of the outcomes that have come through this ministerial meeting are some of the decisions and the declarations have been made focused areas are food security integration of small economies into the trading system support for development uh particularly for the least developed countries these were the major areas of focus dispute settlement reform so you know very well the dispute resolution mechanism has kind of stalled in wto because the appellate body appellate body so it has been deliberately uh, uh we can say <coughs> distracted by usa because here in the appellate body uh the united states of america america has faced certain adverse decisions adverse we can say uh the i mean decisions went against usa 
so during the trump era during the presidency uh, presidentship of trump donald trump so the usa had to face certain we can say adverse decisions and even before that also so because of his reactionary policy he has decided to scuttle the working process of the appellate body and uh, for that matter the entire dispute settlement body because uh, usa is the one of the important funders to the wto and uh, usa choose not to fund the appellate body and uh, for that matter the entire dispute settlement body so once the members who were there they have been retired no new members have been appointed because of the lackluster support or withdrawal of support from usa so kind of now the appellate appellate mechanism has been stalled right apart from that discussions have also been held about special and differentiated treatment just now i have given the example of bangladesh and vietnam so these countries kind of these countries will be treated differently i mean the trade terms will be more favorable towards kind countries like these uh, it, i mean countries think that these are least developed countries and they have to be supported so because of that special and differential treatment will be given to these kind of countries so some further progress has been made on that aspect also right so uh, progress one progress was made on other areas also so try to keep a track of the ministerial meeting so try to cover it comprehensively in your current affairs preparation right so this is about the ministerial meeting 13th ministerial meeting it was held in abu dhabi right. so now we will broadly understand what are the concerns of the developing countries when it comes to wto so till now you might have got a brief picture about the challenges that will be faced by the developed countries at the wto however we will see briefly what are all the challenges or concerns of the wto first thing is unequal benefits from trade liberalization so it is clear in front of our eyes so first when globalization was taking place it was believed that all the countries or almost will be benefited equally but this not happened so under the garb of free day free trade etc so the developed countries have i mean they were able to benefit disproportionately uh, and again they have kind of uh, benefited from the international trade so before nine, before the second world war also due to the colonialism and uh, imperialism imperialism they have exploited the developing countries especially the asian african and the south american countries so that thing is the exploitation is going on under the garb of neo colonialism neo colonialism with the help of bodies like wto so in the name of uh, i mean trade liberalization equal treatment uh countries have to reduce the tra- trade barrier barriers etc so the developed countries have taken the benefit benefit and they are exporting their goods and services to the developing countries however where the developing countries could benefit by sending their people people to developing uh, developed countries they could have benefited but the countries kind of closed their borders to the uh people who are coming from the develop uh, developing countries so in this way they have taken the benefit of low tariffs and when reciprocation has come they have res- refused to reciprocate apart from that you have you might have heard the word of word protectionism protectionism so we hear this word uh, more often th- than not nowadays because when the globalization was the norm the developed countries have taken the benefit when it came to the developing countries they have kind of started growing and uh, doing better business than developed countries best examples are countries like china india south africa brazil so when they are making progress so the developed countries have realized that it is not working in favor as favor of us and they have 
started closing down their borders i mean trade borders let's say so the hypothetical trade border borders so they kind of started protecting their economic interest right so when developing countries for example all these countries countries started making progress right so this is the issue with the developed countries next is subsidy restrictions so developing countries like india they have to give subsidies in certain se- sectors or uh, for the larger benefit of the people for example food subsidy so countries like india have to give food subsidy because uh, people are uh, weaker and uh, there may situations like people may not get food if subsidy is not given so and also second category is like farmers so still india farmers need subsidies some kind of support in the form of subsidies so if subsidies are not given they cannot collect the inputs and start, i mean can't do agriculture so however these subsidies will be opposed by the developed countries uh, at the wto so and one hand they will give the subsidies to the farmers huge subsidies to the farmers to keep the farmers uh, doing agriculture so on one side they will give huge subsidies to the farmers but they will oppose the subsidies given by the develop, uh, developing countries like india to the agriculture sector so this dichotomy is also there next is non tariff barriers so under wto we cannot one country cannot increase or impose unreasonable tariff barriers so this thing is there so what they have done they have resorted to uh, impose non tariff barriers on the imports coming from the uh, developing countries so later in the lecture we will see what are all those barriers non tariff barriers there are technical barriers there are sanitary and phytosanitary barriers etc we will see those barriers what kind of barriers have been imposed another thing is intellectual property rights so basically whatever the intellectual property property rights have been uh, till now so the developing developed countries have the intellectual property rights so they i mean because of their advance advancement advancement in uh, education engineering technology etc so they could garner the all the intellectual property rights and they say that intellectual property rights have to be uh, we can say followed very very strictly so if intellectual properties are followed that strictly and they uh, if they are safeguarded for we can say life long it will be hazarded hazardous to the countries like india so when i was discussing the ipr intellectual property rights i have told and given the example of medicines so how the multinational company companies from the developed countries they are unduly taking the benefit of ipr and uh, i mean giving medicines for a higher and higher cost so for the medicines which could be life saving for the people in developing countries so let's say for the cancer treatment etc so the mncs are selling those medicines at a huge cost that are not at all affordable to people in developing countries so these kind of problems are there with the intellectual property rights apart from that whatever the traditional that is there in the developing countries like india especially the knowledge with the tribal people so because they do not have the awareness they won't take patent for their knowledge so what the developed countries will do they somehow uh, grab this knowledge and they try to patent this knowledge so that kind of i mean funny things will also take place so this is the nature i mean this is what is happening by taking advantage of wto and its rules the best example is one person in usa he has uh, i mean claimed that he claimed to, he tried to claim intellectual property right on uh, <coughs> haldi right he said that uh, i have discovered special i mean medicinal properties in haldi so people should not people anywhere in the world should not use haldi or its pro- products without 
the permission of uh, me or my company so this kind of thing has happened so indian uh, represented representatives who were there so they kind of uh, identified uh, this thing and ha- they have successfully challenged and they have presented the cases that indian people were using haldi from ages old and they have sub- submitted the evidence so because of that haldi could not be patented so these kind of things will also uh, take place it is known as piracy so whatever the traditional knowledge that is there in india so the foreign mnc's they try to uh, grab this knowledge and try to patent so these things are also taking place apart from that another disadvantage or concern of the developing countries at the wto is uh, limited negotiating power so the developed countries all they have uh, i mean Uh, become a block kind of informal block in the wto and they uh, before putting that uh, uh, whatever item is there item for discussion is there first they will come to a con- consensus on that issue and next they force the other countries to agree upon that whatever the resolution or item is there so in this way the bargaining power of the developing countries has been reduced right so in this way the develop uh, developing countries have limited uh, negotiating power at the wto another another concern is market access for agricultural products so developed countries <coughs> uh, i mean they subsidize their products and they are freely coming into the developed uh, developed uh, developing countries so whenever the developing countries try to give subsidies Uh, or support to the agriculture sector for example india tries to give subsidy in the form of msp minimum support price and also there are subsidies on power seeds etc so these subsidies are called input subsidies so they uh, raise their voice and say that so they are i mean countries like india are giving undue subsidies to the farmers so this dichotomy or dual nature of the developing developed countries is there at the wto so these are the concerns so the, some of the demands that will be made by the developing countries are increased flexibility in wto rules so they want that rules have to be made somewhat flexible so that there are changes according to the need of the developing countries next is focus on development so these three rules shall not be that much strict the major goal should be promotion of development so major objective of these rules is is that purpose only no uh, to benefit the people so the, that should be the uh, spirit or focus uh, and the rule should not be, uh, rules should be or can be altered in the broader concept concept or spirit of development so that that sh- that shall also be there next is transparency in trade rules so whatever the rules that will be implemented in the wto there shall be transparent uh, there shall be transparency so now if we see there is not much transparency in the wto rules right so this is broadly about the uh, all the developing countries now we will see the concerns especially that are related to the india what are india's concerns uh, when it comes to wto in that first one is subsidies and domestic support so this is the major concern the develop, developed countries oppose whatever the subsidies given by the indian uh, indian government to indian farmers so basically there are three types of subsidies in the wto i mean subsidies have been categorized into three categories one thing is green box next one is amber box third one is red box so green box subsidies this is the classification done at the wto so green box subsidies they can be given in the agriculture sector there is no limit on that so these those subsidies are so those uh, green box subsidies are generally given in the areas of research and development environmental program uh, programs infrastructure development in rural areas etc so the western countries argue that whatever the subsidies they are giving to the farmers 
dairy farmers they are green uh, green box subsidies and there is no problem with that however they are very very harmful to the countries like india because they are giving the developed countries are giving very huge subsidies huh? in the name of green box subsidies and the whatever the agricultural products that are coming to india are very very cheaper so because of that problem our uh, the produce that is made by indian farmers it is i mean becoming uncompetitive in the indian market itself best example is the dairy products that are coming from countries like new zealand and australia and india rightly choose to impose taxes on those products because uh there in our countries like australia canada and new zealand so the i mean dairy production is like a business hundreds and hundreds of cattle will be put in sheds and uh, it is kind of industry only but if we see the uh dairy industry in india most of the milk that is contributed by small and marginal farmers so basically farmer apart from farming he will keep one or two milk animal so the milk is coming from these two small farmers so they will not be in a position to compete with the big big companies big people who are doing business or uh, business in the dairy sector so that is the thing. second there are certain kind of i mean uh, subsidies they are classified as amber box subsidies so they can be given to a certain extent so that is also there so some kind of subsidies will uh, categorized into this so next there are red box subsidies so these kind of subsidies are completely banned under wto so these subsidies are direct support to farmers like developed countries say that if you are giving msp to the farmers it is a kind of direct subsidy and it should not be continued so under wto the red box subsidies are uh, i mean say forbidden however india says that so this msp is required for indian farmers because to ensure sufficient price support for the farmers and also to ensure food security food security so this kind of support is required for farmers so otherwise the farmers will not grow food crops like wheat and rice so in that case people indian people will not be getting sufficient food so it may lead to hunger and uh, <coughs> famine kind of kind of conditions so these kind of subsidies are necessary so that is the argument of india so however these are the three classifications of subsidies so green box subsidies no limit is on there amber box subsidies there is i mean subsidies are allowed only up to a certain limit red box subsidies they are not permitted at all right so this is one thing so the developing country uh, developed countries oppose but however india puts its argument that uh, i mean we have to give support uh, whether it is coming in amber box or red box we have to give because we have to support the people uh, indian farmers and the indian poor people right so india uh, india's arguments are we have developmental needs because most of the people may i mean most of the people are still under poverty so to bring a people out of poverty we have to do that right so whatever the subsidies have been classified or designed they are done with the focus on developed world not on the developing countries so these are the arg arguments of india right so challenges uh, to the developing countries because of these subsidies are meeting reduction commitments so whatever the commitments are there in the amber box so they have to one side balance the developmental needs and the other side they have to uh, re meet the requirements that are imposed under the amber box subsidies so also concerns about defining minimal trade distortion so it is said in the wto provisions that whatever the financial support i mean subsidies that are given they should be minimal trade contributing to minimal trade distortion i mean trade distortion distortion should not take place because of the subsidies so the developing country is finding it difficult to adhere to this class also right this is about the subsidies and the controversy associated with them 
Next is market access for agricultural products. So this is one of the major concerns of India. So most of the agricultural produce that is coming from other countries to India, especially the developed countries uh, from European Union, etc. However, Indian produce, Indian produce, it is not freely allowed. So many tariff and non-tariff barriers have been imposed on Indian product, including rice. So many other products are there on one pretext or other. There are, I mean, uh, limit, I mean, restrictions on exports from Indian uh, rice from India, onions, oils. So many uh, kind of restrictions have been put, including technical, uh, I mean, technical, we can say, conditions and uh, sanitary and uh, phytosanitary restrictions. So these are related to using of pesticides, etc. So European Union says that if this much pesticides are used in, uh, we can say, crops or uh, during the farming, we will not import them. So these kind of things are there. Not only they say that we do not import these kind of food products and also we do not allow other countries to import them through our country. So even these products are just transferring through European Union. They say that we don't allow them. So that is the level of their, we can say, creating tax barriers. So this is this is a concern for India. So non-tariff and tariff barriers they impose like technical barriers and uh, sanitary and phytosanitary barriers, right? So uh, if we see the challenges and one side developed countries are giving uh, support subsidies to their farmers. So because of that subsidies, there are low, uh, we can say production costs involved. So because of this reason, they sell at very cheaper prices, their products in developing countries. And also they resort to overproduction. There is overproduction than the domestic requirement. So they are exporting their agricultural products at very cheaper prices to developing countries. And apart from that, they impose non-tariff barriers like technical barriers and uh, sanitary and uh, phytosanitary conditions are also imposed. So if you see the Indian concerns, right. So the subsidies given by developed countries and the non-tariff barriers imposed, they are creating hurdles for exports from India, right. So WTO has taken certain measures with this uh, respect. First and foremost and very, very important measure is AOA, that is Agreement on Agriculture, AOA. So in this agreement, so certain limit, I mean, liberal, uh, the restrictions have been somewhat liberalized. So countries like India can provide MSP and also there is a some, uh, let's say leeway has been given to stockpile the food products. Stockpiling of the food products has been allowed for developing countries like India. However, it should be 10% of the overall average production. So like that, conditions are there. So when it comes to developed countries, it is 5%. So up to 5% of the total value of the food production, the countries, developed countries can stockpile. Up to 10%, the developing countries can stockpile. So this is there. And also there are concerns with the, this percentages also because the prices to decide the value of 10% or 5%, they have been taken, decades back values have been taken. So India demands that these values have to be updated, prices have to be updated, but the develop, developed countries are not ready to accept this demand by India. So because of this, there is a tussle between India and uh, develop, developed world also. So earlier, there is also limitation on how long the countries like India can stockpile. So there is a limit that up to 10 years only these countries can stockpile. However, so India negotiated a peace clause. Peace clause that India can stockpile up to uh, up to the time until when a proper agreement will be reached. Proper agreement will be reached for the food security issues of countries like India. So until Till an agreement, a proper agreement will be reached under WTO to ensure food security in India, 
a plea, peace clause been has been given so india can continue to stockpile the food grains until a proper consensus will be reached so that is known as the peace clause so try to remember these important words agreement on agriculture this is one thing and under agreement on agriculture there is a peace clause with respect to india all right next tariff reductions have been made so the developed countries have slightly reduced the, the tariffs reduction in export subsidies so the export uh, subsidies uh, the developed countries will give to their farmers they have also been reduced somewhat next is special and differential treatment so developing countries are given some flexibility in implementing agree, uh, aoa and provisions to address their specific needs so this is about the access to agricultural products next is dispute settlement mechanism i have already explained in detail about the what happened to dispute settlement mechanism in the beginning itself so there is a dispute settlement body is there so once the decision comes if either party is unhappy with the decision they can appeal to the appellate body appellate body appellate body is there they can appeal to the appellate body but whatever the decision comes from the appellate body that is binding on the both the parties however uh, usa in the past has faced uh, we can say uh, adverse decision or we can say decisions which are not favorable to it so because of that during the trump era so this mechanism has been scuttled and there is no appellate mechanism uh, at at uh, now so because of this reason the dispute settlement system has been we can say it is not working properly under the wto right so this is the challenge with the dispute settlement mechanism so india wants that there should be a proper and a working dispute settlement mechanism at the wto right also crit uh, criticism of dsm is it is a lengthy process appellate body is uh, blocked not working and uh, focus on the legal issues too much legal issues are coming into place uh, the then uh, the primary focus so these are the issues this is about the appellate uh body mechanism next is intellectual property right so the concerns about the countries like india developing countries like india when we were discussing the intellectual property rights we have discussed them in detail so the mncs they are patenting uh, and they are producing whatever the patented goods at exorbitant prices which are not at all accessible to poor people like indians so this is the concern with the uh i intellectual property rights so the purpose of the intellectual property rights is that we should be balancing innovation versus access this <coughs> this has to be balanced and access has also shall be ensured right so concerns if you see high drug prices increase limited research and development develop capability here with the developing countries so they cannot going forward or moving we can say uh, su sufficient progress in r and d right so however india choose certain mechanisms to fight the exorbitant charges by the de developed countries by way of compulsory licensing we have studied it and parallel importing right so india is trying to import gener generic medicines from other countries to i mean counter the patented medicines so i mean india has criticized for having the clause of compulsory licensing we have uh, discussed in detail when we were discussing the ipr what is the compulsory licensing uh, process and also we have also seen other aspect that is evergreening of patents evergreening of patents also we have seen so compulsory licensing india has i mean kept itself an option when the medicines are going let's say not accessible inaccessible to the people it can uh, i mean order a compulsory licensing right so <coughs> india's measure has been uh, criticized saying that it will discourage research and development in the ipr sector so however so we have kept those classes for our own i mean for our benefit in unforeseen conditions 
so it has to be continued so this is about the intellectual property rights next are non tariff barriers so non tariff barriers are technical barriers to trade sanitary and sanitary measures so technical barriers if you see those are regulation standards testing requirements etc these are all technical barriers so uh, sanitary and phytosanitary are uh, they aim to protect human animal or plant health from risks associated with imported products so apart from that there are quotas there are embargoes and there are subsidies so all these things are there right apart from that government procurement so some countries favor procurement of the nationally or domestically produced goods over the imported goods so those conditions are also there apart from that there is lack of transparency in all these issues right so india's concerns are disguised protectionism is there from the developed countries lack of transparency is also there so these are indian concerns right so these are the uh, issues about uh, i mean several issues that are there for india at the wto so this is a very very important topic try to have a comprehensive understanding of the topic right so both from the point of your prelims and also from the mains perspective it is very very important so uh, this is the i mean this is the topic now we will see two previous uh, previously asked the questions from this topic first question is asked in 2017 the question is consider the following statements statement 1 india has ratified trade facilitation agreement of wto yes this is a correct statement uh, tfa is a part of wto's bali ministerial package of 2013 yes this is also a correct statement uh, tfa came into force in january 2016 so it has not uh, come uh, into force in 2016 it is an incorrect statement so correct option is option a statement 1 and 2 are correct so try to be updated with the current affairs related issues also so uh, questions will be coming from the both the static part and also the current area next question it is asked in 2016 question is in the context of which of the following uh, do you sometimes find the terms amber box blue box blue box and the green box uh, in the news so uh, it is an easy answer wto affairs so subsidies are classified into uh green box amber box and the red box so blue box is one kind of category one type of category of subsidy under the amber box right so these are the questions previously asked right so this is it for today and tomorrow we will start the history topics so one uh, one major uh, we can say subject we are remaining that is history and art and culture art and culture along with history we are uh, left with so apart from that we have completed almost all the major subjects right so from tomorrow we will start the history topic right so this is for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you tomorrow until then have a good day.